Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. Today we're going to talk about a controversial bill that's been passing through the House of Commons, and I've been waiting for a little bit more information, uh, but what's come out recently is so alarming we have to discuss, uh, because Bill C-293 has easily, with very little resistance, passed its way through Parliament. It's going to be shortly on its way through to the Senate, and could very soon limit um, not just sweeping powers for the government, but their ability to decide essentially what you could eat and what you can consume in your day-to-day -day life. Now, I've often stood out as an advocate ever since the days of the convoy saying that anytime the government requests more power, people should be leery of giving it to them. In fact, the reason that our original ways, our original adopted laws were put into place were to limit the corruption that could come with the government having too much power. The big problem anytime we look at the pandemic or anything that's happened recently, and I always refer to those things because it's proof in the pudding, that anytime you give these sweeping powers to government, they very rarely or never want to give them back because it's all about control. And the government is now in this new state of a business where it feels it has the right to tell you what to do with your body, where to live, what to watch, what to listen to, uh, what to put in, in your mouth now apparently. As we now see Bill C-293 being labeled as Canada's Vegan Act. Now this is a way of getting around all the unnecessary hoopla that's going on with what it really means to be controlling. I want to go through this article and then I want to talk about why this is very dangerous and why this needs to be dealt with and why I would question that conservatives aren't pushing back on this bill. Again, you should always question any level of government that's asking for extra sweeping powers. It says here in this article, it's almost inconceivable that Bill C-293 remains largely unknown amongst Canadians, given its potential to significantly expand governmental powers in response to future pandemics. Again, this is where it's a big deal. I know Danielle Smith has come out saying she's uh, revising Alberta's Bill of Rights so that Albertans have the right to make their decisions about what they're going to do, that the government is not allowed to overstep uh, certain jurisdictions when it comes to your personal choices. But now this is a federal bill, which I believe, even with Alberta's Bill of Rights, I would question if it has the ability to override Danielle Smith's revised Bill of Rights, especially in Alberta. It says here, a detailed examination of the bill does more than sow confusion, uh, or sow confusion, sorry, of its intentions. It reveals a troubling spirit at its core. Bill 293, a private member's bill, recently advanced through the House of Commons with very little resistance and purports to bolster Canada's pandemic preparedness. Yet a deeper analysis exposes provisions that could disastrously impact the agriculture and agri-food sector, which are vital to our national economy and food security. So again, our ability to provide for Canadians, but also to move our GDP, to keep people in business. Under this bill, the public health officials could have the authority to close facilities they consider high risk, such as meatpacking plants during pandemics, and even mandate the consumption of vegetable proteins, measures that are broader on uh, measures that border on the absurd. So again, they have the right to tell you, well, we're going to shut down this plant because of certain. Now, again, put this back to the Koof days. If they said, well, certain meatpacking plants have had um, multiple cases that are confirmed, we'll say. Uh, so let's shut it all down. Shut them all down. No more meat comes out of there. Nobody's working anymore. Shut down the plants. Um, you're going to eat the bugs. I know we joked about it with the whole Klaus Schwab thing over the, over the pandemic days, but this is serious. We're now going to tell you that you can't eat. And we're going to tell you what you can consume. So by shutting down meat plants, not only are you putting farmers out of business, but you're essentially taking control of Canada's food supply. This is communism <laughs> at the whole. Uh, you know, people always talk about Russian interference. This is communism. A deeper analysis exposes provisions that could disastrously impact. Oh, sorry. I already went through that. Um, it's hardly surprising, sorry, that the private member member who introduced 293, is Liberal MP Nathaniel Smith, who is known for his vegan lifestyle. Again, 
they're going to dress it up however they can. Yeah, uh, we're just we're just making sure everybody's concerned about their future. We're just we just want to make sure that we have the ability to control things from spreading, ladies and gentlemen. Should there be another pandemic, keep in mind. There are those who say, I will not say me on this channel because we all know how censorship goes, but there are those who say the last pandemic uh, was caused by those who had special interests, we'll say. The ease which this legislation has passed highlights a disconcerting disconnection and dysfunction within our parliament, where normally proposals of such magnitude undergo extensive debate and scrutiny. Again, my question to the conservatives, why is there no pushback on this? What gives you the right to determine what we can and cannot consume. Currently, the Senate, which is now receiving 293, is inundated with more than 120 letters daily from concerned groups and citizens, all apprehensive about the bill's broad regulatory reach and its impl uh, implications. One of the most alarming aspects of 293 is its discretionary power it would grant to officials to shut down agricultural facilities without clear objective criteria. Such arbitrary actions could disrupt not only meat supply chains, but also the wider agricultural operations linked to them, including feed production. This threatens to destabilize related sectors and could trigger cascading effects throughout the entire food system. What affects one affects the other. We talked about the short demic. I've, I've spoken to great extent before that this is part of the plan. When you look at Justin Trudeau talking about carbon emissions that uh, if you remember about a year ago on the channel, we were talking about farting and burping cows that uh, they were claiming Stephen Gabot was saying that uh, the methane that's, that's produced by cows farting and belching uh, was going to ruin the environment and that they wanted farmers to start, stop using certain kind of uh, fertilizers. Now f there's this very bold science behind the reduction in certain chemicals and fertilizers that farmers already undergo. And if you ever watch uh, channels like Quick Dick McDick, uh, you'll, uh, you'll understand that it, he had a great video going through just what the process is and what it costs them to do these things already that now the government can come in and just say, no, nah, we're just gonna shut you down. They, they will have the control to dictate who can work, who can't, when you already look at things like Arrive Scam, you look at the billions in contracts that went out to Trudeau's friends, what do you think is going to happen when this gets pushed through and they start shutting down certain meat plants, keeping other ones open? They shut down certain farms, keep other ones open. Or, much like the paper straws that we see that are now in our society, thanks to Stephen Gibault, uh, certain companies will be told, well, these are crickets and these are bugs that are now made from another factory that we're going to ship into Canada to make up for the meat plants we've closed. And you're going to eat those because, well, when you buy those things and you support those things, it pads the pockets of our friends. Moreover, legislating the consumption of vegetable proteins represents an unprecedented uh, governmental intrusion into personal dietary choices and market dynamics. This could severely disrupt the economic balance of the agri-food sector and adversely affecting everyone from livestock producers to participants in traditional protein markets. Additionally, the bill seeks to regulate and possibly phase out certain farming practices considered high risk for pandemic propagation. This could abruptly alter farming operations, affect livelihoods, and hinder the economic stability of numerous producers, making a transition to purportedly safer practices impractical. Farming is woven into the fabric of our national identity with modern livestock agriculture playing an indispensable role. If Bill C-293, however, goes so far as to pick winners and losers within the agriculture sector, sidelining segments that have made substantial contributions to our economy, again, it's all at the government's disposal of how they want to move, who they're going to award those contracts to. While promoting alternative proteins may align with global moves towards more sustainable food systems, the directive approach uh, of Bill 2C9, C293 sorry, risks stifling innovation. Predetermining market winners and imposing dietary changes in the name of overly cautious risk management could impair the ability of Canada's agri-food industries to adapt to market demands and consumer preferences. So again, if you look at people who say, um, I need the proteins from chicken or, or beef uh, because I have an allergy to something or I have specific needs to something. Again, I always re reference the pandemic. 
Do you remember when they first started saying people had to wear masks in stores that if you had a doctor's note, if you had an exemption, you would be treated fairly, that you would be allowed in the stores with an exemption. And then that never happened. Everyone was told, we don't care. You're going to do it anyways. You were uh, talked down to, you were belittled. You were screamed at and harassed by people. You were called uh, a denier, selfish, dirty. What do you think is going to happen if you come forward and say, well, we're not vegans. We're not going to eat bugs and we're not going to eat specific vegetable proteins that the government demands. My question is, is how do we know the government hasn't put some kind of byproduct in those vegetables or those bugs? Uh, as it currently stands, 293 presents considerable risks to the stability and sustainability of Canada's crucial agriculture and agri-food sector. The Senate must decisively reject this bill. Beyond its implications for food policy, 293 also reflects broader concerns about the state of our democracy and the level of public awareness in Canada. Again, I know a lot of people on this channel have been very vocal in our community about talking about this bill. Again, there were other aspects to this bill I didn't want to cover again because of censorship. This article gave a little bit of leeway for me to do that. But you should really look further into 293 and what sweeping powers it's giving the government. And again, understand how unbelievably crazy it is that a lot of Canadians aren't even aware this is going through the House. This is the plan with these bills. They silently push them through while everyone's unaware so that they all of a sudden have this power and there's nothing we can do about it. The fact that this bill has remained under the radar until now speaks volumes about the current state of public engagement and information. If more Canadians were aware, there's little doubt that this bill would face overwhelming opposition. So again, it comes to you, the viewer. What do you guys think about 293? What do you think about giving the government any extra powers, let alone the powers to redistribute our food systems and tell us what we can and can't consume. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to give a thumbs up and a comment down below. It helps push this video out to new viewers, telling them that this is content worth consuming. And this information is vital that we get out at this moment. Uh, you should be contacting any of your uh, local MPs, especially if they're conservative ones, asking them, demanding why have we not been given information about this? Why is it being kept silent? And why was there very little pushback in the House of Commons to put through this bill, giving, granting, not giving, but granting sweeping powers to the government to decide what, what we can consume in our lives? Um, if you enjoyed this video and it's first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. Make sure as you're clicking that button, you hit the bell for notifications. Join me live here on the channel each and every Friday night for Friday Night Fringe, our live streaming show, where we're going to go over everything that happened this week in politics, everything coming up in the week ahead, and uh, a little bit of back and forth within the community. Joined by my beautiful wife, Mrs. Fringe. We look forward to chatting with you guys each and every Friday outside of making these videos and hearing what you have to say. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you this upcoming Friday, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.